What's up guys? So today I'm out in one of our site builds. This is a shed that we've actually built on the people's property. There's no trailer involved. And with that comes a lot of city inspections, both framing, but also an electrical inspection. So in this town, they require metal conduit and steel boxes. Now I used to be an electrician when I first got into construction. I actually really enjoy uh, electrical work and bending conduit and things like that, but I understand it can be really challenging if you've never done it before. So today I want to teach you how to install the steel boxes and also how to bend conduit and we'll go through some different bends, some offsets, how to measure the 90s and things like that, and also how to drill up through the plates, through the joists using a cordless drill and uh, how to properly strap your pipes and everything in place. So really start to finish how to rough in electric using metal conduit tubing and steel boxes. So let's get started. This is what they call a 1900 bracket box. Now I'm not sure exactly why they call it a 1900 box, but it's a pretty standard term in the electrical world. The reason they call it a bracket box is because it has this nice bracket on the side here, and that's gonna come in handy when it comes to mounting these on the studs. The other thing you're gonna need is some deck screws. Now this is now code that you can't use roofing nails to nail these boxes in. You have to use a deck screw. Now I just happen to have these white ones, and um, so that's what we're gonna use but you have to use some sort of exterior grade screw it can't be a drywall screw and the reason is, is because you have a galvanized box and then you'll have if you have a drywall screw it'll actually rust itself out so you got to use something that doesn't uh, create electrolysis between the, the fastener and the box so let's go ahead and mount one of these up I'm gonna mount the switch first now what's cool about these boxes is a couple of things they have these little tabs that hugs the, the face of the stud right here and then you also have these little set markers right here and what that's for is you line your box up with your line now I make my switches at 50 inches off the ground it's pretty standard hammer those little spikes in, and then it'll hold it in place then you take one of your screws send it through one of the holes you know one on the top one on the bottom and then that's it so I'm gonna go ahead and put all the outlet boxes in so that we can get started on the piping so one of the things that I strongly recommend is to mount all your boxes before you get started. It'll make everything go a lot faster. The reason it'll make everything go a lot faster is just get one task done so then you can switch to a drill and then you do all the drilling and then you switch to a saw and a bender and you do all the uh, bending of the conduit. So I really like to get all the boxes mounted before I start anything else. So that's all of the boxes that we needed to mount for this little shed. Now what I'll do is I'll start laying out how the whole thing's going to flow together. So whenever I'm trying to explain um, electric to somebody who's never done it really before or how to run it, one of the things that I'll always say is just imagine it's like a, it's like a flow of water, right? So it's got to start somewhere and it's got to end somewhere else. But it does not have to create a loop. It just needs a start and a finish. So when it comes to piping a simple little shed like this, there's a lot of ways to make this go really fast. I've already gone ahead. This box right here has a pipe in it. And through the wall to the backside is our exterior electrical panel. So that pipe is going to bring in all the power to the whole little shed. So it's going to have a circuit for our baseboard heat. It's going to have a circuit for our outlets and it's also going to have a circuit for all of our lighting now we use a little wafer light they're really easy to install and they're super thin and they're led and then what i like about them is they have this little switch thing here to change the color temperature of the light so we like to put them like a 3500 now i've temporarily mounted all these boxes but they're going to need pipe between all of them so i went ahead and disconnected these so we're not hitting our heads on them now that we've mounted all the boxes in the room it's time to now put in what we call our connectors. Zinc connector set screw for half inch conduit. It has this little ring right here and I'll show you how these are installed. So first things first, load up the pouch so you don't have to walk around and grab a bunch of stuff. This is something new by Klein Tools. It's really fancy. Got some wire strippers in there. This actually works as a conduit reamer and then this tapered punt nose to here. This will knock the, the knockout ring right out like that or you can use a more traditional style which is a pair of um i like the 430 channel locks and then they come with the blue grips on them and then i take a razor blade and i take those off because you'll see why in a second this is probably my favorite way to rough in electric i've already taken one out the top we're going to need one to come down here and into that outlet so i'll just take one out at the bottom and we take our 
take our box connector, comes apart like that, top goes in there, ring goes back on on the bottom side. And then I'll typically just hold the ring and then I'll spin the fitting. It's the fastest way to do that. And I kind of tighten it like that, where it's kind of facing off to the side. Then I come back with my channel locks and I give it a good twist. And you'll feel it, you'll feel it bite down and you'll know that it's really tight. It's important that these are tight because in whenever you're piping, the electric in the ground is the pipe so you want to make sure that these rings are super tight the next step is to drill all the holes first things first at what we got going on and kind of visualize where the pipes are going to go and how they're going to get to wherever they need to go the first thing i know is this pipe right here is gonna go right into the side here. And then this pipe needs to come up, come across the wall, and drop in over here. And then this pipe is gonna come up into the ceiling, catch these lights. This is exactly why I don't recommend putting corner to corner, because the lock rings tend to collide with each other. Another thing that I don't really recommend is whenever you're doing outlets, don't put anything in the center knockout on the side because that's where you're when you put your screws for your outlet in you don't want your screw to go through and hit your wires or if you're going up and down try to avoid the center but our outlets are going to go horizontal so we want to make sure that we just avoid the knockout out the middle whenever marking out our outlets switches holes all that kind of stuff i like to use milwaukee ink saw marker our outlets are at 16 inches off the ground to the top of the box that's typically what i like to put them at when marking our holes i'll typically go like 24 inches off the ground you definitely want to be more than six inches taller than the box and the reason is the actual 90 or the elbow when we bend a piece of conduit if we make it as short as possible that's six inches itself. So we wanna have it a little taller than that so we have some room to work with it. If we need to put an offset or kick in it. So 24, 30 inches, it all just depends. 24 is a nice easy number to do. This bit is actually an inch and a half. It's all I had in the truck. So it's actually a little too big, but we'll put some nail straps in there to hold the pipe nice and tight. And then I like to just take the, the center of this and just center it on our line really big hole for this. I don't recommend this bit for this, but I mean, it'll work, but you wanna leave something here so that any fastener that goes through here isn't gonna go through the pipe. We'll be nailing our uh, conduits to the back of these holes to keep them away from the face of the stud. So let me go ahead and drill these holes real quick. To the center of this connector, then I take my marker and I just line it up with two and a half and I make myself a mark. Same, same process applies to going through plates as going through the studs. The only thing that I check is I kind of take my hand, check for nails, because you don't want to sharpen bits every time you blast through a nail. So then it helps to have a ladder. These little sheds, the ceilings are so small that we have a couple of these step stools. So what I went ahead and did, putting the pipe in here, and it makes it easy to cut the pipe. The first thing I'll do is I'll measure to the back of this fitting right here, and I'll see that that's like three quarters. And then I'll take a measurement from here to the edge of the box, 10 and a quarter. So we're gonna go nine and a half to our 90. Every bender is a little different. So on this particular bender, this is for half inch EMT conduit, it says it right there. It says stubs, five inch to the arrow. Now what does that mean? So we take a piece of conduit. We said that our piece, our 90 needed to be nine and a half inches long. So here's how this works. And I go four and a half. Now why did I go four and a half? Well, because this bender says that the 90 stubs five inches to the arrow. We take our number, which was nine and a half, and then we go five inches, and then it brings us to this mark. So the easiest way to remember this is, make your mark or however long your 90 needs to be at nine and a half, come back here, five inches, make another mark. Then take your bender, see the arrow? Put the arrow on the mark, just like that, line it up, put it on the ground, and apply straight pressure to this foot pad right here. So straight down. And then you kind of look at it. And when it's straight, it's straight. And that is your nine and a half 90. So then you can check it, take a tape measure, have it flat, have it standing up, and then you check it. And it's at nine and a half. So the second step is then we lay the pipe down like this, take our bender. Welcome to working in a shed tight spaces. 
take your bender, put it like this, take the 90, and just have it squared up like this. And I'll show you why in a second. So the second step is you gotta figure out how long this piece needs to be. So what I like to do is I'll just measure right to the top of this plate, and it's at 13, it's at 13 and a quarter. So then I'll measure this, which is at 47. Now, a lot of people might have tricky time with the math on a tape measure if you're not used to it, so here's a trick for you. Come over here and you mark 13 and a quarter right here. Just a little mark on the stud. And you hold your tape measure like that, and you'll see that it's right there at 33 and three quarters. And we put it right to the bar, make sure we're square, and we go 33 and three quarters. And then... Same thing now, you'll see why I like to use these channel locks. So the first thing I do is I take the top end and I ream this out. So I get all those burrs off of there. Remember, wires are going through here, so we don't want to cut anything. Then we take the other side of it, bring it down like this. Check the other side. This is a factory finish, so it doesn't have any burrs on it, but I still like to ream it out a little bit. Then take our piece of pipe, put it in here first. So it goes up in there, swing this around. If it's a little off, you can take your bender like this. So I'll take my bender, stick it in there like that. And I'll just kind of pull on this a little bit. And that's it. Take our screwdriver. Okay. So now there's a problem because I'm not used to doing this like this. I'm just used to working. So. Um, one of the problems that we just came into is we have a hole here, right? And we're supposed to have a pipe that goes through here. And it's supposed to cross over and go into here. So I went ahead and changed our piece because we were blocking that hole. And, uh, you know, it's one of the nice things about working with conduit and stuff like that is it's pretty simple to change it up if things aren't working out, if you gotta move something. If you need to cut something. So here's another trick. You could just put it in the in the fitting, hang it down, take a look at it, take your thumb like that. Just like that. I got my thumb, I haven't moved it yet. Take my saw and I just line it up and then I take my thumb out. You gotta remember to do this. This is a rookie move. If you don't if you don't ream the pipe and then you go to pull all the wire, the little burrs and stuff. If that's sharp, it'll cut the wires. And then drop it in, send it home, and you got a nice piece. And then that's that. Okay, yeah, we crossed intersections a little bit. So the next pipe we're gonna put in is the one that goes across the wall into that outlet. We know that we're at 24 inches. The top of the box is at 16. 24 minus 16 puts you at, take a short piece of pipe. As my father would say, don't be a hero. Don't try to do the thing in one piece because you'll just end up struggling. You do it in a couple of pieces to get across the wall because you're not gonna be able to get the pipe to slide through the wall. So just grab a small piece to start out to get out of the outlet. We're gonna go eight inches for our 90. So we take our tape measure, we mark three inches, and we bend our piece just like that. Clean on our ends. And then we go ahead and take our pipe, send it through our hole, and drop it in. Now we said we were gonna put our pipes to the back of these holes. So before we go any further, you see how like when I push this pipe to the back of the hole, and we're all we're off our hole now, now we're angled in the wall. So what I need to do is I need to do what's called a kick on the pipe. So I need to put a bend right here that sends this back and brings that pipe more solid. So then what we'll do is take it out, Lay it on the ground. It doesn't need a lot. It just needs a little bit, just enough to keep it straight in the wall. So we'll just, just pull up on it a little bit. That's enough. Just put a little kick in there. Nice and flat to the back of the hole. If you got 16 on center like this, the best number to read uh, or go with is something that's you know on a 16 on center. So you could do a four foot piece here and I'll show you why staying, when you're cutting the pieces that go in the middle, 
before you get to the other outlet. Staying with 16s on center, we'll go 32 actually. So we're gonna cut a piece 32 and I'll show you why 16 on center is a really fast way to not make, to not make a lot of mistakes. So I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna measure my piece. I'm gonna cut us a 32 inch piece of pipe. Again, hopefully you have a bigger place to do this type of work than in a little shed. Doing this in a shed like this is a challenge. Okay, now we've got our piece. Ream it out. I'll show you why cutting it at, at a 16 inch increment is so important. So you got it right here. See, it gets a little tricky. Find your spot. Pull it in front of the hole, slide it through. And now, when you get all the way through, you take a coupling, put your coupling on there like that, tighten it down. The reason I cut it at 32 inches, or 16, or 48, or whatever, is because I don't want to end up in a hole. You run the risk of getting really close to the stud and it becomes very difficult. But if you look at this, because I cut it on 32, I end up at the same exact spot away from the stud as I did over here, which just makes things more manageable to work through. And two studs is, is about as much as you're gonna get through it. So now we gotta cut another piece. Gotta come up out of that outlet and go into here. Again, we're gonna measure our 90 to be eight inches. So we wanna go eight, so we'll make a mark at eight. Move the tape measure back to five, because that's our half inch bender, it's five or minus three, either way. And then we take that top mark, put it on our bender, just like that. Line that arrow up. Bring our 90 up. And now, this is a nice way to do this. So I put it in the fitting. I look over here. Again, I like to use that thumb. So to where my mark was. Ream our pipe, and then we send it through the wall. Before we put it down in our box, though, we're gonna put our coupling on, slide it through. Make sure that these bottom out, sometimes this screw, see this screw? That's a problem. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Make a mark right here so you can see it. Watch what happens. It's really important to check these screws because the pipe could fall apart in the wall when you're trying to pull the wire. The screw, the screw is too tight, so see, when I unscrew this, see how it went in? And then tighten this one down first. And then send it home into the box. Tighten this down, tighten this down. Oh, we didn't put a kick on our piece, so we gotta put a kick on this one too. Whenever you're piping outlets through the wall, typically, whatever you do to one side, you're gonna have to do to the other. Another way to do that piece is you look at it and you go, okay, the bend needs to be on this side. So another way to do it really fast is you could just stand the bender up like this, look at your piece, make sure that that's parallel, and then just push down. That's enough, you just need a little bit. And then you put it back through the wall, put it back into our coupling, and then put it into our outlet box. And I did a little too much. Another fast way to correct the problem is you can put it in the stud. Don't ever pull outward, but you can push upward like this, watch. We just lift up on this. Take a little bit out of it. Go back through our holes. Line back up. And go right in. Tighten our connector now. Now for the next step. See how difficult that is? There's a little, little bump in there. It's made for this. Hold it right there. Take your hammer. Nobody, it doesn't fall out. It's a nice way to put the strap. Like right, this is a good spot right here. Take that strap. You take the big screwdriver, put it right there. And you use the side of the stud to hold the screwdriver in place and you just leave it on that knot. And when it gets to there, knock it in with the screwdriver a little bit. That's that. Well, look, I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, learning how to put the pipes through the wall. I'm gonna finish this whole thing up, so I'm gonna let you go. Let me do my thing. But uh, if you have any questions about anything related to electric, whether it's piping or wiring, or wanna see other videos on this subject, um, it's actually something I know a lot about, and I would love to teach you guys as much as I know about one of the trades that got me into construction and one of the things that I love so much. So you leave your comments, likes, and all that fun stuff below, and if you haven't subscribed, please do, and we'll see you next time.